Sisters and brothers, only Luke tells us the wonderful story of the disciples on the road to Emmaus. They were discouraged, disappointed, and confused. They had such high hopes that Jesus was the one to redeem Israel. But he had been crucified, and their hopes were dashed. Then a stranger joined them on the journey. As he opened the scriptures, their hearts burned within them. They welcomed him into their home to share a meal. Jesus was the stranger to whom they offered hospitality. Like those disciples, we too can experience the risen Christ. He also comes to us in surprising ways and unexpected places. We welcome him in the stranger, the scriptures, and in the sharing of the Eucharist. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit and be with you all. And with, and your, with your spirit. There is one of the phrases in the first readings today, the first or the second, it talks about the grave that could not hold him. The grave could not hold our Lord Jesus. Whatever graves we may find ourselves in from time to time, the Lord Jesus wants us to be raised from them, and he will do what he can to lift us out of those graves. So we praise him for his goodness and for his eternal life as we sing the words of the Gloria. Jesus 
Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed faithfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and proclaimed, You who are Jews, Indeed, all of you staying in Jerusalem. Let this be known to you and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus, the Nazarene, was a man commended to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs, which God worked through him in your midst as you yourselves know. This man, delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Therefore, my heart has been glad and my tongue has exalted. My flesh, too, will dwell in hope. Because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. 
But since he was a pro proffer and knew that God had sworn an oath to him, that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus. Of this we are all witnesses, exalted at the right hand of God. He received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth as you see and hear. The word of the Lord.
neglected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father him who judges impartially according to each one's works, conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your sojourning, realizing that you were ransomed from your feudal conduct, handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord.
be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped looking downcast. One of them named Cleopas said to him in reply, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, what sort of things? They said to him, the things that happened to Jesus of Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some of the women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, how slow of heart to believe all that the prophet spoke. Was it not necessary that Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them and it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us? on the way and open the scriptures to us. So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem where they found gathered together the 11 and those with them who were saying, the Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
The gospel story today is that famous story we know so well of the two disciples going to Emmaus. They're leaving Jerusalem. What were they doing? Why were they leaving the rest of the disciples and the apostles? Nobody knows for sure. Uh, And and so that, that gives me the freedom to speculate a little bit. Why did they leave the rest of the disciples that day? This is still Easter Sunday. I wonder if they had given up. I I wonder if just a couple of days after Jesus' death, that they had to be thinking to themselves, this thing is over. We thought maybe he was the one. They say that to the, the man who they don't know yet is Jesus walking along. We thought he was the one, but maybe we were wrong. Maybe they were just walking away, walking away from, from, from it all. They, they, they thought maybe that the, the, those who were there early in the morning, the woman first, and then last week we heard the story about John and Peter being there at the tomb early in the morning. Maybe they just thought they were crazy, and they come back with this wild tale. Some of the others go to check it out, and it seems to be true that the tomb is empty. Nobody's buried there, except they didn't see him alive. Maybe they, 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 they thought those who, who were telling this story about him alive and seeing him, maybe they, 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 they thought they were simply in denial of the truth, believed that somebody, somebody stole his body. Just one more indignity upon the heap of indignities that Jesus had suffered along the way. And so they left. Heading away from Jerusalem, away from the company of the disciples, away from the church. When things get dark for us, brothers and sisters, Moving away from the church, away from the support of the presence of brothers and sisters, that's always the wrong way to go. Even when things are darkest in the church, or when we're not even allowed to come to church, we have to find other ways to stay close to each other, to to, to stay connected. And isn't that what the Lord is trying to teach those two as they're walking along the road? When he says to them things like, this is precisely the way the scriptures say that God was going to accomplish redemption. This is exactly the way. You know, life life is really messy. And it doesn't go the way we want very often. The message of the scriptures, the teaching of Jesus, even more his example, is that if we remain faithful, even in the messiness of it all, God knows how to redeem it. He knows how to bring life and goodness out of it. And, you know, right now in our community here, there's a lot of faithfulness. There's a lot of dedication going on between us. Even during these days, people are are calling each other just to say, hi, are you okay? Can I get you anything? I get lots of phone calls like that and emails like that every day. I try to make any number of calls exactly like that every single day. And, and what makes us do that stuff? Except the, the deep, deep knowledge in us that, that one person's broken body lived with faith 
points to the gloriously risen body of the Lord Jesus, the life of God. And we long for that in our own lives. Those two disciples that day, walking away from Jerusalem into the evening, they did not recognize that it was Jesus who was right there on the road with them. Because they could not imagine how a, a, a broken body could become a gloriously risen body. This can't be him. We buried him two days ago, three days ago. And we are witnessing exactly the same thing ourselves these weeks, how, how broken bodies point to the glory of God's resurrection, of the Lord's resurrection. Those two disciples that day, I, I, I think they were walking away from it all. They, they couldn't see the truth that we have come to know, that a broken body is not the end of the story. Maybe they were walking away. Maybe they had given up. The good news, however, of the resurrection is that even when we're going the wrong way, we're moving away from the church, we're moving away from Jerusalem, even when we're going the wrong way, the Lord still comes to us. He comes along and he walks beside us. But because we're, we're oriented in, in, in the wrong direction, we, we, we don't recognize him. We, we can't, cannot recognize him. But, but, but he's patient. He pulls us along slowly. He, he walks with them and he talks with them. Don't you, th don't you think you guys are going the wrong way? Don't you, don't, don't, don't you understand that this is exactly how God is, is, is going to accomplish such great things, the, the Lord reaches out to us. And if we are open enough to the voice God uses to reach out to us, our hearts begin to burn with the recognition that that's the way it's described in the Gospel of Luke. Their hearts begin to burn and in the celebration of communion, our, our eyes are open. And they recognize him in the, in the breaking of bread. The, the bread has to be broken in order to be shared. The bread is taken into the Lord's hands that night at a, at around the table at a, at a town called Emmaus. The, the, the bread's taken into the Lord's hands and it's ripped apart. And in breaking bread, they recognize the broken body of Jesus right in front of them, risen to life, gloriously alive. And in that recognition that that is the Lord Jesus sitting at table with them, what, what felt like this long journey, oh, we can't go one more step, let's stop here for the night, please stay with us, it's already late. That, that long journey is, is turned into a very short one. In an instant, they're up on their feet, they're on the road again, and they're back in Jerusalem, retracing their steps, going back to where they belong. And they're welcomed back. They're greeted even be before they get to say anything, before they've had anything to say about this long experience that we've read about in the gospel today, before they have anything to say about it, that they are greeted with, with the Lord's risen, it's true. When things are difficult, we never do well to walk away from our brothers and sisters. We stay where we belong, in the support of our church. That's where we belong. And we are making extraordinary efforts here to make that support real and, and, and something that, that, that is alive. For from the very first days of the church's existence, we've called what we do here at the altar the breaking of the bread. 
And that's precisely in the breaking, breaking of the body, that the power of God to bring life where there is nothing but death shows itself. When you're broken, or when you're breaking, this is where you belong. And if it's not your physical presence here in one of these pews, it's your virtual presence through that camera that I'm pointing out right now. Your desire to be here, your desire to celebrate with us, to pray with brothers and sisters. Our desire to be connected and express our care for each other. This is where we belong, however that happens. These may turn out to be some of our best days, our deepest connection to each other, because there is in our community right now a deep sense of what we're missing. We miss each other. We miss being here. I miss seeing you sitting in these pews as we do these masses each week. None of us wants this to become typical. But this is the moment when we show precisely who we are and whose we are, whom we belong to. We are the body of Christ. We are his. In the fellowship of brothers and sisters who are, who are struggling to, 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 hand our, hand, to hand our breaking lives over to the Lord, we will experience his presence walking with us along whatever road we are on, and our hearts will burn with the recognition they will burn with his love and his mercy. Amen? Amen. Brothers and sisters, we profess our faith together, saying, I believe in God, uh, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, and the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. the body of Christ, the church throughout the world, that we both individually and collectively can experience the light of our faith in an often dark world. We pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer. 
for those who serve others, teachers, medical and legal professionals, and those who perform direct services to the poor, that they may be supported by our prayers and the resources of society. We pray to the Lord. who always seek to manifest a spirit of happiness and good cheer, that they may be rewarded through our positive response, through their gestures of kindness, we pray to the Lord. refugees, immigrants, and others who seek a better life, that they may be able to fulfill their dreams through the assistance of those who have the ability to help. We pray to the Lord. who have been cast aside by society, the elderly, prisoners, and those who do not neatly fit in with contemporary society, that they may see their personal value in their own human dignity, we pray to the Lord. suffering from the coronavirus in their families and for all who have died among our own family and friends, we pray to the Lord. the people of Holy Spirit Parish and their families, we pray to the Lord. the bread and bowed his head 
been asked for a blessing then he broke it into pieces of three he gave to these blind men this bread blessed and broken and suddenly their blinded eyes did see his life was blessed far more than i could ever imagine he was touched by god's grace Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us pray that our sacrifice will be accepted by God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and the glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your church. And as you have given us cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to praise you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, 
but def defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Eat this bread and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offering of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son 
and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her husband, with your apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, with all the bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people whom you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have gathered before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, and about to deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
wings in orbit runs to the weary the worn and the weak and gentle hands that hold me when I'm broken they conquer death to bring me victory Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those whom you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in our flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We have a couple of weeks of birthdays to catch up on. So give us a minute. <laughs> we wish a happy birthday to Doreen Strong, Cheryl Blakemore, Juanita Pollard Hurt, Lachelle Robert Wilson, Liliana Morales, Morgan Crawford, Charles Leak, Mary Brown, Gloria Aniqui, Carol Bug, William Hughes, Kendall Fortson, Marcus Jones. Alicia Valerie, Sandra Rose, Jesse Carr, Greg Lewis, Dan Lawson Jr., Lillian Carter, Maxine Friend, and Steve Abrams. And may God bless all of you. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. 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 May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. 
And may you who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith by living in a right manner on this earth be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to glorify the Lord by living his gospel. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. They crucified my Savior and nailed him to the cross. Yeah.